As we're continuing in a series tonight, Grace for the Furnace. Turn with me to Daniel chapter 3, 14. Most of our lives as Christians are spent going through stuff. It seems like that while we're in the world, trouble comes. And I don't know where we got the idea that we were exempt from trouble when we got saved. Actually, we all deal with all kinds of stuff in our lives. That's the reason we gather in the house of God and try to lean on one another and lean on the Lord and draw strength from the Word of God that we can keep on going. Somebody shall keep on going. Let me say this before I read Scripture. No matter how low you get, how defeated, how discouraged, how sick you get, don't you ever give up. I said, don't ever give up. Press on in Jesus' name. So let's look at the scripture. Daniel 3, uh, verse 14. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Is it true? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not you serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up. He said, Now, if it be ready that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet and the flute and the harp and the salesman and the salsery and the dulcimer and all kinds of music if you fall down and worship the image which I have made well but if you worship not you're going to be cast the same hour in the midst of the burning fiery furnace and just who is this God that you're talking about that can deliver you out of my hands Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, we're not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. How many know God is able? How many know that whatever you're in tonight, God is able? Somebody shout, God is able. I don't, I'm, tired, I'm sick and tired of hearing people brag on the devil. Let me brag on God. God is able. Whatever I got to face, God is able. Whatever I'm going through, God is able. Somebody shout it tonight. God is able. He said, but if not, uh-oh. We could have stayed in verse 17. would have been all right. But if not, be it known unto you, O king, we're not going to serve your gods nor worship your golden image that you set up. Nebuchadnezzar, full of fear, the form of his facade was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, began to speak and commanded they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it wanted to be heated. He commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, cast him in the burning fiery furnace. It's as if he's defying their God. Take these men, and these men were bound in their coats, their hose, and their hats, their other garments were cast in the midst of the fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that which took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Intense, intense time. And these men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the fiery furnace. Let's pray, Father. We thank you that we are here tonight to hear from the word of the Lord. Knowing that your word speaks truth to us, that truth gives us strength to stand against the fiery furnaces of life. God, I pray, breathe your Holy Spirit upon your word. Give us ears to hear, heart to receive. God, anoint my lips of clay that I would preach with power and authority and dominion that every demon and devil will be cast out and lives will be delivered in Jesus' name. And everybody shouts one more time. Good to have Jamie here with us tonight. Praise God. Jamie is been going through a lot. We're continuing the series, Grace for the Furnace. Grace for whatever you're going through in life. Whatever season your life is in, good, bad, or ugly. Whatever problems you're dealing with. Whatever crises have risen up in your life. Whatever you're experiencing right now, God's grace is sufficient. If it were not for the grace of God, get this now, you would not even be here tonight. You would have been swallowed up a long time ago. You would have been defeated a long time ago. You are here tonight, but that's proof that God's grace is sufficient. Somebody thank God for his grace. One for his grace, we'd be in a ditch somewhere. We'd be in a crack 
house somewhere. We'd be uh, 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 on skid row somewhere. But because of God's grace, uh, we've been through the hell uh, uh, of the hell that the enemy has put in our lives. But we come out victors. Has anybody got victory tonight? Shout amen. So we would not be here tonight if it wasn't for God's grace. Somebody shout grace. There's a story in the Bible in, in Zechariah where Zerubbabel was facing a mountain. And that mountain was in his way. And it was standing upright before him. And he said, you're going to be flattened. You're going to become a plane. You know why? Because I'm going to shout grace unto you. It says he stood flat-footed and shouted grace. I don't know what you're dealing with tonight, but would you help me shout grace? If it's sickness, shout grace. If it's uh, uh, depression, shout grace. If it's pain, shout grace. Somebody shout grace. If you got marital problems, shout grace. The Bible says grace is a powerful source. Amen and powerful force. God's enabling power to see you through whatever the devil brings you to. No wonder God said his grace is sufficient. Life is filled with uncertainty. It's filled with surprises. It's filled uh, with the unexpected. Uh, 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 It's filled with hard times and dark times and bad times. If you're not careful, life will blindside you. Life will cold cock you. Life will ambush you. And it will shatter your world into a million pieces. Things will come out of nowhere and blow your life into a a, a sidetrack your life like a whirlwind. And only the grace of God can bring you through it. Somebody shout grace. I don't care how good you live, you got to have grace. It's not on your goodness or your righteousness. It's it's not on on how good works or godly character. It's not how much you pray, how much you go to church. I'm telling you, it's God's grace. Because let's just be honest tonight. Nobody prays enough. Nobody serves enough. Nobody gives enough. Am I preaching to anybody? But thanks be unto God, I am what I am by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God's grace is sufficient for whatever you're going through. We're gleaning from this story tonight about the three Hebrew boys were thrown in the fire. Now notice something. They were thrown in the fire not for doing wrong, but for doing right. And somehow we've got the idea that if, we believe, if we're living right, that nothing bad can happen to us. But, but, but let, let me say this. They're walking in God's will, but everything's not going their way. Uh, The three Hebrew boys uh, are are thrown in the furnace, not because they bend and not because they bowed and not because they compromised. They're thrown in the furnace because they stood. And that's hard to understand. And can I get a witness out there? And so they they were doing what was right, but wound up in a furnace. So you'll say, Pastor, I don't understand that. Let me show you the difference. For those that are obedient to God and those that are serving the Lord, you may go in the furnace. But because of your righteousness and your godly walk, God said the furnace ain't going to hurt you. And you're going to come out victorious. Now, that's not promised to the disobedient, to the sinner. But God has a promise. God said you may go in that fire, but it will not burn you. Somebody shout amen. Oh, I want to tell you, sometimes I'm in stuff, but the stuff can't get in me. Hallelujah. So they came out totally delivered. That's how God delivers completely and totally. The last few weeks we talked about lessons from the fire. Let me just review just a moment. Never make a per- number one, never make a permanent decision based on temporary circumstances. Always pray over your decisions. Be slow to move. Don't act rashly and do something you regret later. Number two, never allow your past memories to, be- to become greater than the dreams for your future. There is more in front of you than behind you. The best of your life is not over. Get that out of your mind. I know you try to drag up a dead memory and try to live off that. I'm telling you, if you knew what God had in front of you and what God had for you, oh, somebody shout out, it ain't over, hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. So never allow us to move forward and forward in great expectation. Remember, number three, you have an appointment with destiny. 
Now we are called, chosen, selected, handpicked, birthed in the kingdom for such a time as this. God so looked over the generation of time, he saved the best for last. He said, I need you, 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 and you, and it may not look like it. You are birthed in the kingdom for purpose and destiny. And God, you are, are you ready for this? You are the devil's worst nightmare. Oh, somebody shout amen. That's right, he's worrying you and attacking you. There's something inside of you that God put there of greatness that puts the devil nervous and makes the devil on the, uh, be on the run. Amen. Look at your neighbor say, I, I'm called for now. This is the day of my greatest opportunity. The devil's afraid of me because of the power of God in me. Number four, we're talking about number four tonight. Remember this. Some things are meant to be survived and not conquered. Daniel 3.17, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the fiery furnace. I say it again. God is able to keep us out of the valley. Out of the furnace, out of the storm, God is able. Somebody shout it again. God is able. That's the kind of mighty God we serve. He's a God of the impossible. He's a God of great power. He's a God that is able. Somebody say it again. God is able. There is nothing too hard for God. We should believe that and testify to that. No matter what you're dealing with, say, my God is able. My God is, has power is able to bring me out. I'm coming out. God is able. Amen. But sometimes we find ourselves thrown in the furnace. But God is not only able to deliver us from the furnace, he's able to deliver us in the furnace. Amen. God could keep us out of the furnace. You believe he could do that? God's able to stop the king, but sometimes he doesn't. And it's hard to figure out why he doesn't. It's hard to figure out why we're facing some things we have to face. But the Bible says God's children will suffer persecution. Sometimes we will go through some stuff and we don't know why. Have you ever just said, why in the world is, am I going through this? Oh, come on now. We've all built our little pity party and our little place and cried and we, we were the Lone Ranger. And why in the world is God letting me go through this? Why am I facing this? Why? why? Because there's a devil loose. But now I don't understand why God don't keep us from all the bad. I guess if he wanted to, I know he could do it, but the furnace has purpose. You get this now. The furnace does something in you. God's not working on the furnace. God's not working on the valley. God's not working on the enemy. God's working on you and me so that when we come out, has anybody ever come out better, stronger, Look at your neighbor and say, I've been through some stuff. You don't see the scars. and You don't see the pain. I, I've cried all night long, but look at me now. Hallelujah. I come out, praise the Lord. Somebody give the Lord some praise in this house. I came out of it. Glory to God. I've been through it, but I came out of it. Mm. Amen. Amen. God, I don't understand why I've got to deal with some stuff. God, I don't want to go into the furnace. God, I don't want to fight the battles. You ever just been like that? I just don't want to do it. I just don't want to deal with stuff. Survival is dealing with stuff you don't want to deal with and coming out victorious. After you defeat it, you look back behind you and say, wow, that must have been God. Has anybody ever been through anything that doctors didn't do it? And medicine didn't do it. And money didn't do it. You look back and say, my God, look what the Lord has done. God says, you need a, a moment like that that says to the devil, are you ready for this? You need a time to say, devil, I told you so. I told you I was not going to die. I told you this wouldn't kill me. I told you this wouldn't defeat. Have you ever had a devil, I told you so? You look back over your life and see what God has did. Oh, somebody shout, I'm a miracle. Amen. Amen. So let me just tell you this. I hate problems. Man, I, I hate church problems. I, I do. I hate them. I hate conflict. I hate tragedy. I hate pain. I want to be happy. I want peace in my life. Is that anybody's prayer? But it seems like the older I get, the more this eludes me. And I find myself dealing with things 
I never in my life thought I would have to deal with. I thought that was behind me. I thought years ago, but now I'm facing stuff that I never thought I'd have to face. And I don't like it. Amen? That's the reason so many preachers are leaving their pulpit. During this COVID crisis season, trying to rebuild and get things back. Uh, we're just not seeing it happen as fast as we want. And, and preachers are getting tired of it. Uh, one guy said, I'm tired of trying to beg people to church. I'm tired of trying to get people to come back to the house of God, telling me they can't come for COVID, but they can go everywhere else in the world, but don't come to church. I'm tired of it. I'm, I'm tired of dealing with it. I'm tired of people lying to me and saying, say, saying I'll come back when it's safe. I'm tired of it. Uh-oh. He said, I'm tired of people coming back and thinking COVID has put them in neutral and park. And so now they sit back with their arms crossed and let, and let somebody else do it. Uh-oh. Where's the fire and the passion and the desire to say, you know something? I'm called to help rebuild the church. Hallelujah. What the devil meant for evil, God's going to use me to turn for good. I will be uh, called of God. I will do what I need to do. If I need to sing in the choir, I'll sing in the choir. If I need to help the children, I'll help the children. If I need to drive a bus, I'll do whatever I got to do. I won't relax in the house of God. I won't sit back and take it easy and let somebody else do it. I know somebody made a statement this past Sunday about us needing something in the church. And one of the ushers said, are you going to do it? <laughs> and the guy, blah, 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 uh, uh, uh. it's so easy for people to say they need to do it. No, we need to get together. And I need to make this church the greatest church I can be. Amen. See, I think it's time to rise back up with fire. Amen. And so the truth is there are times we have to deal with stuff that we hate. Now, if you can't do that, you, you've already lost the battle. So-and-so talked about me. Honey, let me bust your little bubble here tonight. Everybody don't like you. I know you think, hey, hey some people are talking about you. Some people are telling lies on you. Some folks are whispering behind you. You got to be all right with that. You got to say, hey, I'm not worshiping them. I'm worshiping God. They will not stop me from being and doing everything God's called me to be. Amen. Amen. I hate stuff that I have to deal with, but I deal with it. That's the attitude of a survivor. Doesn't seem like it, but God is working good in it. Do you ever stop when you're in something and say, God, where's the good at? Where, where at? God, if, if you're doing something good, can you just show me so I'll feel a little better? And you know, isn't it, right, isn't it like God, God don't show it to you all the time? And a lot of times you don't even see it. Maybe sometimes down the road somewhere. And you say, you know, we're like Jacob. I didn't even know God was in this thing. And he was there. He was working, praise God. So now we move into verse 18. God is able, but if he doesn't, we're still not going to bend and bow to the devil. We may be hurting and not understanding why. We may be broken and bruised and can't understand it. We may be betrayed and lied on and can't understand it, facing persecution. Don't even understand why. I don't deserve this. Have you ever said that to God? Oh, don't look at me so funny. I don't deserve what I'm going through. As a pastor, I guess sometimes on Monday mornings, us pastors have that little prayer with God. <laughs> I don't deserve what I'm going through. Come on now. But our minds are made up. If God does not deliver us from the furnace, he's going to do something in the furnace. So I will survive no matter what I got to go through. I... How many will say with me, I don't want to go in the furnace? Oh, oh, come on, super holy folk. You just like me, you don't want to have to deal with it. But if I do, 
Oh, now that's the place to shout. When you move into verse 18, that's where you begin to shout. If I do wind up in it, I'm still going to praise God. I'm still going to worship God. I'm still going to serve the Lord. I'm still going to dance. I'm still going to shout. I'm still going to praise. I'm still going to go to church. I'm still going to pray. Hallelujah. I'm still going to do it. Oh, hallelujah. Have you learned? Have you moved into verse 18 yet? Come on now. We will survive. We will endure this. Have you ever looked at something and said, I'll outlast you? Anybody ever had any problems? You say, I'm going to outlast you. See, sometimes I talk to my body. I say, I'm going to outlast any pain. I'm going to outlast you. <laughs> We're going to hang in there. Shout amen. I don't know what i got to face. But with God's grace, I'm going to survive this. Somebody look around your neighbor and say, I'm a survivor. Now, now let me help you right here because this is going to hurt. Look at these empty pews tonight. Some people are not survivors. Some people have not survived this. I survived COVID. That's what we need to get us a shirt, say, I survived COVID. It didn't get my faith. It didn't get me down. It didn't stop my fire. It didn't, oh, come on now. It didn't knock the joy out of me. I survived COVID. I still believe revival's coming. I still believe the Holy Ghost is, is about to fall. I still believe in heal, healings and miracles and souls being saved. I still believe the best thing we've ever seen is about to happen. I wish somebody would help me. That's why I survived. I survived, Doug, to see it. I survived, uh, Philip, to experience it. I survived. I survived to see. Oh, I'm about ready to see something, Tony. That's why I survived. I've been preaching revival. I've been preaching the latter-day rain. I survived all this mess so I could see what God is getting ready to do. Woo! <laughs> That's why I'm still around. Amen. Amen. When Job was going through his dilemma, and everything and everybody seemed to be against him. He said this, I will wait. I will hold on. I will endure till my change comes. I won't quit no matter how hard it gets. I won't give up no matter who turns against me. I won't throw in the towel no matter how much pain I endure. I'm waiting on God until things change. I'm still going to praise him. Why are you still shouting? Why are you still praising? Why are you still going to church? I'm going to keep on till my change comes. I will survive this. I will outlast this. I will endure this. That's the attitude in the furnace, and that's the attitude of the survivor. Habakkuk said, oh, Lord, how long have I got to cry and pray? Lord, I don't understand why you haven't already done something. Then he says this. But I will stand. Sometimes you stand when it don't make sense. The secret to survival is saying I'm going to stand. I started out many years ago. I'm too close to home to quit now. I'm going to stand. Amen. Sometimes you just got to make your mind up. This thing is not going to kill me. You got to have enough gumption and enough backbone. When you look back over your life, how many has had stuff? To happen to you, now, I believe all of us have, that should have killed us. How, how many of you have been through some stuff you felt like you was going to die? I mean, it hurt. I mean, you never hurt like you hurt before. But you made it. Well, God said to tell you, if he brought you out of that, he'll bring you out of this. This thing will not kill me. This is not going to destroy me. I'm going to fight till I can't fight no more. I'm going to trust God when I don't understand. I'm going to remain faithful when it seems like God has forgotten me. When I've got, uh, I've got nothing to hold on to, I'm going to hold on to his unchanging hand. I'm going to, I've trusted God this far. I'm going to trust him on. What's grace that brought me safe thus far? It's grace that will lead me safely on. Somebody shall grace. So after all is said and done, after hell has hit me as hard as it can hit, after the devil has tried everything he could do, after the storm has blown my life into little pieces, after the dust settles, I'll still be standing. That energizer rabbit ain't got nothing on me. Somebody shout amen. 
I will survive whatever hell throws at me. And because I survive it, this is what I learned. Because I survived it, I have defeated it. I beat it. I come through it. I conquered it. Now, some of you are here today, and I'm about to close. You've been through hell and high water, and I realize that. I'm your pastor. I know some of the pains. The enemy has sifted you like wheat. He's rose up against your family, against your marriage, against your home, against your mind. There's a lot of hurting, broken people out there. You should have already had a nervous breakdown. You're tough. <laughs> Many people went through what you went through, wound up in an insane asylum. You should have already gone back to drinking. You should have popped the top, untwisted the cap, shook hands with Jack Daniels, and went back. Oh, come on now. You, you, the stuff you went through, I mean, you really didn't think you were signing up for this. Actually, you should have quit by now. Nobody would blame you because the devil's been sitting on your shoulder saying, quit, 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 quit. God don't love you. Quit. The last place you should be tonight is sitting in this church praising God. But that's what survivors do. They still got a praise. They still got a hallelujah. They still got a glory to God. Not because they won the battle, but because they survived the battle. Can you stand to your feet and give God praise? I survived it. Shout, I survived it.